Hello friends, in this video, we'll go through ServiceNow and WebEx integration using OR 2.0 authentication. First, we'll go through the flow and then we'll go through the demo. The configuration on the WebEx side is very easy. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. So first, we need to create the integration to get the client ID, client secret and auth URL. Using the auth URL in the browser, we get the auth code in the redirect URI as a query parameter and we'll store that auth code in the system property. Now using the auth code, we'll make an API call to the WebEx uh, to get the access token and refresh token. And in the response, we'll get the access token and the refresh token. Okay. Once we have the access token, then we'll use that access token to make the WebEx API calls. In this case, we are creating a WebEx meeting. Okay. And in the response, we'll get the WebEx meeting details here. Okay. Once the access token is expired, then we can use the refresh token again to make the API call to the WebEx to get the access token. Now let's go to developer.webex.com to create the integration to get the client ID and client secret. So let me just click on login. Uh, if you don't have the account, then you can uh, sign up first and then you can log in. Okay, I have the account, so I'll just log in. Once we log in, then we'll go to the profile and in the My Webex apps. And we have an option here to create an integration. So we'll just click on that. So uh, the first choice is no, because we'll not be doing this for mobile. So we'll leave it as is. Then we'll have service no integration name as service no universe. Now we need to select uh, some icon here, or we can upload some image also, but we'll select some here. Okay. And we need to provide uh, the description connects with service no. And then we, we have to add the redirect URI here. So for that, so this redirect URI where we'll get the auth code, right? So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, the scripted REST APIs in the service no instance, and we'll create a new scripted REST API. Let me name it as service no universe, and I'll save this. Okay. Now I'll create a resource in that. So I'll just say redirect URL. Okay. and I'll say the relate to path as redirect and here uh, as we receive that as a query parameter right auth code so what I'll do is I'll just add variable auth code is equal to request dot query params dot it is uh, received as code okay so what we'll do is let's uh, print that gs dot info and I will print the request uh, dot query params so I'll add just some dot stringify and I'll do request dot query params. Okay, let's print the query params as well as uh, let's get the auth code here. And I have created some system properties here. So we can see there is a system property for auth code. So let me just copy this. Currently, all the system properties are empty. So what I'll do is I'll go here and uh, in this, I'll just set that property. GS dot set property. Then I'll use uh, the WebEx auth code property and I'll set, set the auth code in that. Okay. Now, uh, if we need uh, authorization, then we'll uh, keep this. So once uh, it hits this redirect URI, then it, uh, it asks for service no uh, username and password. So we have to provide that. So let me just keep it as is and let me just save this. Okay. Now let me go to log using SNUtils. So if you're not watched my SNUtils video, then you can go and watch that. Okay. And now I'll just go here and we have to add the redirect URI, right? So what I'll do is I'll just copy the service no instance URL. And then after that, I'll just go here and this is our uh, redirect URI API, right? So I'll just copy this. So this is our redirect URI. Okay. So once we uh, hit the auth uh, URL, then it will redirect it to this with the auth code. Okay. So let's see that. And these are the scopes what we need to do in this integration. So uh, we'll create uh, the meeting, right? So create, manage, and cancel scheduled WebEx meetings. And uh, if you want, we can read the meetings as well. So I'll just select these two scopes. And at the bottom, we have the button called add integration. So we'll just click on add integration. So once we do that, we have the client ID here. So let me just copy the client ID and let me go to the system properties and I'll put that in the client IDs. Okay. And let me just go back again and copy the client secret and I'll go back and add the client secret here. 
okay now we have the auth url here okay so let me just copy this auth url and i have to go to the browser tab and i have to hit that link okay so once i do that it asks for webex login first so i have to sign in so once i sign in is it asks for the consent so we need to click on accept so once i click on accept then it goes to the redirect url so we can see that here uh, it is going to the redirect url with the auth code here okay so we need to just provide uh, the username and password for the service no instance okay so i'll just click on sign in okay now uh, if i go to uh, the logs then i can see uh, the query parameters here okay so these are the query parameters and i am getting the code here okay and if i go to uh, the system properties again the auth code is empty now so if i just do this then we have the auth code here okay now we'll use this auth code to get the access token okay okay now to get the access token we need to hit this api and we need to provide these parameters uh, in the url encoded format so we'll see that in some time so we need to provide the grant type and that should be authorization code okay. in our last video we have seen the grant type as password that that is called as password flow now the grant type is authorization code here so this is authorization code flow okay so we'll see this in some time and we have to provide the client id we have to provide the client secret and the code which we received uh, from the redirect URI and we have to pass the redirect URI as well. Okay, uh, it should match uh, with the uh, whatever we have added in the integration. Okay, okay. now let's do the scripting in the background script. For that, I will use the snutils command that is slash bg and I'll just do control and enter. So that will open the background script in the new tab. Okay, okay. let's use rest message v2 to make the API call. So we'll, we need to add uh this endpoint here so we'll use the function set endpoint and we know the endpoint that is this i'll just copy it from here and i'll add it here okay now the method should be post so we need to add the method as well set http method and the method is post okay and we need to add the content type set request header it is and uh, that is content type and content type should be uh, form url encoded so we can see that here it should be in this format and let me just add it here okay and uh, when it is a uh, form url encoded type then uh, there is a different way to add the request body so once uh, so normally what we do is we'll add the request body as the object but here we need to add the request body as uh, the string actually okay so what i'll do is i'll add the grant type first grant type is equal to we know that that is authorization code okay then we'll do and then we have to add the client id right client underscore id and we know the client id we have stored that already in the property so i'll just get it from that property so let me just uh, copy the client id system property and i'll just add it here okay then uh, we'll do and client secret we need to pass so that is equal to and we have the property for that as well okay and the property is this okay and plus important uh, that is the code we need to pass so i'll just add a code and then we have the property for that as well get property and i'll just copy the webex auth code system property and i'll add it here okay now uh, we'll get a response using sm dot execute function okay so let's just print uh, the response dot get body okay and uh, we'll print gs dot info and we'll print the status code as well okay now let me just click on run script okay now we have the access token here uh, in this url okay now if i try to hit it again using the same auth code then it gives us error because using the uh, using the same auth code we can get the access token only once okay now if you want the new one then we need to uh, go to uh, the auth url again and hit that again to get the auth code first okay okay now let's store the access token and the refresh token in the system property so for that what i will do is i'll add 
if the response dot get status code is equal to 200 okay then we'll pass the response so i'll just add passed rest body okay that is equal to json dot parse and we'll add response dot get body to it response dot get body okay and then we'll use gs dot set property okay and uh, let me just copy uh, the access token system property and i'll add it here okay and from the parsed rest body i'll just take access underscore token okay now i'll do gs dot set property again okay i'll copy this refresh token okay and i'll add that and i'll use ask this body dot refresh token. okay now let's click on run script okay now we have the access token and we have the refresh token as well in this okay so now we have the refresh token here we have expires in when the expire, uh, access token gets expired and we have the refresh token expires in as well so if you want we can store them as well and we have the token type as well that is bearer type okay and we have the scopes as well uh, for, uh, which we have selected while creating the integration okay and we can see uh, the access token and the refresh token are added to the system properties here and now we'll use this access token to make the api call and uh, we'll use uh, the create meeting api call to create the meeting on the webex okay now let's go to the webex documentation again to get the create meeting api so we'll just scroll down here in the api section we have uh, the meetings okay, i'll just click on meetings and in the reference if i scroll down then i can see uh, the meetings uh, here so when i open that so i have a post call here uh, to create the meeting okay yeah now we can see see that here and it is uh, slash meetings okay so now let me just go back and we'll just modify this one okay now this is a uh, access token we'll just replace that with meetings okay okay this is the api to create the meeting and the method should be post okay the method is post and the content type is now application or json okay so we'll just remove this now it is application or json okay and we don't want the body like this uh, as it is application or json so we need to pass the body like json here okay and uh, if we scroll down then we can see the title is mandatory uh, start date is mandatory and end date is mandatory okay the other things room id uh, and this agenda password these are all uh, non mandatory okay so we can uh, have these as well but currently we'll add only three title start and end okay so now let me just go back and add here uh, so before that we need to make that stringify so let me just do json dot stringify okay and then i'll add title okay title i'll add service now universe meeting okay i'll say 17 slash 09 okay so let me just add start so when it should start I'll add 2024 09 and today is 17 and I'll add it should start at 8 p.m. Okay and let me add end. Okay when it should end so I'll just add that as 8.30 so it is it should be half an hour meeting so I'll just add 20. 30 zero, zero. okay now uh, here we have option to add the time zone as well so let me just add the time zone okay i'll add time zone okay so i'll add it as asia kolkata okay now we'll execute that and we'll wait for the response body okay so i'll just remove this Okay. and we need to pass the authorization as well right so we need to pass the access token so for that we need to pass that in the header okay so we'll add request header and the header should be authorization okay 
so we need to add bearer space and then the access token and we have the access token in the system property so that should be get property and uh, i'll just copy the property name from here okay now i'll just click on run script Okay, now we have uh, the meeting created and the idea of the meeting and uh, the detail of the meeting is here. Now let's go to webex.com to see if the meeting is created or not. Okay. Again, we need to sign in here. Okay, after signing to the webex.com, uh, then we can see uh, there is a meeting scheduled here, Service Now Universe meeting 1709 and that is scheduled at 8 p.m. Uh, to 8.30 p.m. Okay. Now let's do one more and I'll just do that as the second meeting okay. and I'll schedule this uh, at 4 p.m. Okay. Okay, now let me click on run. Okay, it is created and now let me just refresh this. Okay, now I can see the second meeting created here. Okay, that is 4 to 4.30 p.m. Okay, so this is how we can have the integration between ServiceNow and WebEx. You can explore more APIs here in the documentation and implement them as per your requirement. Okay, now if someone clicks on schedule here in the WebEx.com or in the WebEx application, then ServiceNow must know the meeting schedule from the WebEx. So for that, we have the webhooks in the WebEx. So stay tuned. Our next video will be on webhooks in WebEx. That's all in this video. If you like this video, then please hit the thumb icon, share the video with your friends, add your valuable suggestions in the comment and subscribe the channel for more videos like this. Thank you.